Is you ready? I, I've been ready. I've been waiting for you for two hours. You know what? <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Some people, I'm telling you, you know this is around the Easter season. And I'd like to wish each and every last one of you a happy Easter. Good Friday is coming up next. You know that's the path from Christ. I don't care what language you say it in, it's still the passion of Christ. Celebrate it. Worship, give him the honor and the glory. And let's hope it brings a little bit of peace in this world. Because in my city it hasn't brought anything but violence. There was so much violence in this city last night till it was ridiculous. Shootings everywhere. I tell you, it really makes you feel bad. It makes you feel sad that uh, it seems like that's all we're about is how we can kill each other. And you know, we haven't progressed very, <clears throat> very far and very much in all the centuries that we've been here. It's just in the type of uh, things that we use to kill one another. I'm telling you now, try your best to forgive those that have hurt you, made you feel bad, disgraced you. All you had to do was leave it on. Go ahead, just go ahead and talk. Make you feel bad or whatever. All right now, my babies. I see a few of you have stopped a little bit to listen to what maybe I might, what I have to say. Cause what I have to say is my opinion, nobody else's. I don't know if it's gonna fix anything or help anyone, but I hope that it can. Or even make you feel a little bit better. Or even make you know that you're not the only one who's having trials and tribulations in this world. I just want you to know that you're loved regardless. Who you are, what you are, or what you think you are, you're still loved. All right, let's get on. All right, this first question. Um, this is titled Young Love. I just want you oh, make sure y'all uh, thumbs up and share this video. Thank you. And when you write in, please keep it two paragraphs or less. The paragraph should have at least five to six sentences in it. I want you to get straight to the point. We don't need a backstory. We just need the point of the letter. All right. So, I just want your opinion on my current situation. I am a 20-year-old college, but I'm a 20-year-old junior in college. And have never been in a real relationship. Mm. My parents want me to get out there, but I feel it's a waste of time and money mm. since I'm not ready to marry anyone at the moment. I have a loving family and good friends, so I'm not lonely. I do feel pressured and at the same time, like I'm missing out on something I will regret later in life. When I do attempt to make a pass at girls, I always end up in the friend zone. I'm not really an aggressive guy. I have... I also have high standards when it comes to what I think I want. Yes, I am a virgin. I believe that's befitting considering I am also a minister and a Bible believer and Bible believer. But I don't want to use my title as an excuse for not dating. It is is it weird from a woman's perspective that I have not fully experienced a real relationship as of yet? Is young love an essential part in this social content? Well, let me tell you. <clears throat> Keep thinking the way you think you might not ever get out there. Not because you're somebody strange or any of those kind of things. It's just that life passes you by. Today you're 15, tomorrow you're 20. Next morrow, or whatever, you look, you're 30. Can't miss what you never had. 
people can talk about love all they want. But if you never experienced it, you don't know what you're missing. It's just word of mouth. When the time comes for you, the Lord got somebody for you, though. Don't be so scared of it. See, you, you support the preacher's son, or, or you know you said you was a preacher. So you want to live by the Bible, and you want to go by those texts and everything. I can understand that. I don't care who you are. We all got some devil in us. And um, you can take a big chunk out of you when he feels like it. So, when he does take that chunk out of you, don't be surprised. Charles, get that from the cat. It's nothing that um, hasn't happened to everybody at one time or another. But it'll, it'll come up on you. Don't worry about what other people say. And if you never get around to it, then... And plus, you're only 20. I say wait a little bit. You, ain't, you don't got to be in no rush. No, you don't have to be in no rush. Okay. Bye. How you an extra birthday shot out and you're not in the camera? Yeah, the old nigga. He yeah, I'm about to get draw all me on video. Mm. Nigga, yeah, this is my baby. Like... He about to this my first grandson to a big fat thing. Twenty. He my he my baby though. He my boo. Mm. He got my boo. Where my love this thing? Now who's that? Come on, bring your ass. Y'all getting to be a pain in the ass now. Come on, bring your ass on across here. Come on. Come on, you messing up my cameo shit. Sit over there. That's what this cameo's got. My baby right here. All right, somebody said this is going to be long, but it's not. And it's titled My Unfortunate Situation. I... I could never ever get enough of your videos, but okay. After a year of being single and not looking, I met. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I'm, I'm glad I don't read these letters before because I'm falling out already. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't allowed to do that. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. After a year of being single and not looking, I met this guy on this dating app called Jack. Back in November, mm. this conversation was extremely delightful. Sex was the furthest thing from my mind, and that's what I really liked about him. After about a week of conversating, I felt comfortable enough to take him on his offer on meeting for coffee. There are so many great things to tell. However, we've been dating since then, and I don't know how to tell him I don't want to see him anymore. <laughs> Reason being, I don't find him sexually attractive. And the chemistry in that department is just off. I've tried to overlook it, but I can't. He can't kiss. His hygiene isn't always lemony fresh. And he says he's in love with me after only knowing me for five months. That freaked me out. There was a time after quite a few drinks, I was going to invite him back to my place. Just, I'm not saying that. Just to see what the dude was all about. This invitation was on short notice, so that would lead to assume he wasn't prepared. Mm -mm, don't uh -uh, don't be writing all of this stuff. Oh, come on! When I was trying to get into it and work my way down to it, I damn near went into a respiratory failure. It was <laughs> it was so awkward. Please help. How do I do this tactfully? Well. Five months is it's, it's not a, a long time, I will admit. But see, a woman has to groom a man the way she wants him to be, not the way he wants her to be. Both of you are really grooming each other. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what you need to do is... Uh, have a little intimate moment where y'all take a bath together. 
Give him that shower. Slick him down from head to toe. He gets some underwear that you like to see him in. God. When you put him in the underwear that you want to see him in, if he got any type of body, he don't have to have a a beautiful shape or nothing like that. Just a halfway decent shape. Girl, and you put him in some decent underwear, you put him in the cologne that you want him to smell like. What excites you. Not what excites him. You know, you putting on something that, that don't excite you, nah. You get him a small bottle or a bottle or something that you like. It make you want to say, rah, rah. You know what I mean? That's what you looking for. You want to lick him up and lick him down. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Teach him about the hygiene. If he ain't got that clean enough, teach him how to keep it clean. He ain't got to shave, teach him how to shave it and shape it. You know? Teach him what he need to do, what you like. Then when you got it the way you want it, you're going for the kill. Show him. He don't know. He young like you. He thinks he's doing something. Training to your ways. Not to Molly and Mary and this one and that one that might have had him before you. Treat him to your ways. Tell him what you want. And after you do that, if that don't help, then you tell him you outgrew each other. That's all. And it's time for you to move on. You can't be that he's just not appealing to you. But you gotta try that first. Train him to your ways. Girl, have him smell the way you want him to smell. Wash that body up from head to toe. Toenails, fingernails, up nails, foreskin, every damn thing. Well, some men have foreskins on them and women don't necessarily like it. But pull that foreskin back and clean that bad boy. Clean it good so they got no odor to it. Because the odor will get into it if that hood is over there and it don't get pulled back and clean good. And clean that foreskin. Woo! Shake that hair. You know all that excess hair get in your damn lungs again. Come on now. Come on, that damn hair down. Shake some of that hair down. Do your thing. Give it a try. Let me know. Let me know now. I want no off for this one. Okay. Hi, I love you, Mama Scorpion. I truly do value all of the advice you give. You remind me a lot of my grandmother, which brings me to this topic. My grandmother just passed away about a year ago, and I had a hard time coping with it. She always pushed me to love. Y'all shut the hell up. She's always pushed me to love everyone and learn to accept them for who they are <coughs> and to tell it how it is, brutally honest. She taught me more than my own mother ever could. I need help right now. I'm from the South and my parents are deeply prejudiced and intolerant to other races. Any mm -hmm. any other race. Mm -hmm. When my grandmother passed, I was instantly comforted by the younger brother of my big brother who died in a car accident. Wait a minute. When my grandmother passed, I was instantly comforted by the younger brother of my big brother who died in a car accident's best friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. My parents blamed his brother for the death. My parents blamed his brother for the death of their son. Uh -oh. Although these things have happened, he has been there since the beginning. And I have fallen deeply in love with him. And although we are young, me being 19 and him being 23, I can't see my life without him. He has voiced his impending proposal and I would love it if I could get my mother's approval or acceptance. The only problem is he is white. It scares me. He knows that the man that I love will never be enough for her because of his skin tone. I want to be with him, but I also want my parents and love in my life. What should I do? What would you do? Pray on it. Bring the Lord in on it. Ask the Lord to give you guidance and show you the way. 
Uh, well, if, if they, I know they've already met him and everything. Um, I don't believe your parents are stupid people. They already know what's going down. If they don't, they got some kind of idea of what's going down. I feel as though that's your life and if you want to live it being with him, then so be it. And if they don't see it their, if they don't see it their way, then don't worry about it. Because life goes on. Whether they do or whether they don't, it's not going to make too much any difference. Because you will still do it your way. Now, if you don't love him enough to, to climb over that bridge as far as they're concerned, then uh, maybe you will have a chance to find somebody that you want again in life. But you can't always say that that uh, opportunity or whatever love will come knocking at your door. When the next time love will come knocking at your door? Because... She can be a very finicky person when she wants to be. But if that's what you really want, even though other people may not see it your way, like I said, that's your life. You got to live it. They ain't got to live it. But you want your, your family in there, like you said. So give it a try. All right. I'm a 26-year-old woman who has been dating a guy for less than six months. I recently discovered I am pregnant. We both were thrilled, had discussed being married and having a family together. However, a turn for the worse has come. We casually mentioned in a conversation one day, religion. Okay, I'm just trying to make out what they're saying. Okay. It, okay, it turned into an explosive argument. I am a Christian, and it turns out he does not believe in Christ. Not only that, he also doesn't want me introducing my child to the faith, including going to church and praying. He always gone to church with me before and even prayed together sometimes. So now that a child is in the picture, I can't see where this is coming from. I know this is a conversation we should have had before sex, but what am I to do now? I am a solid, devout Christian, and I want my child raised in church. I can't imagine I can't imagine my life without it. We are both stubborn. After the argument, the disconnect and tension is so thick in my home now. I need peace, and I know I okay. I know I'm gonna just skip that. I need peace. Oh my God. But have you... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Dad. You're it all. I don't get to know... But they need to write these well, damn... Come on with that. They need to write these damn letters right. But go ahead. Just uh, just <laughs> tell them what you're thinking about the situation. <laughs> you getting them, the goody two-shoes? I don't get that, but a few words. Come no. On now. Mom, they didn't write the letter right. It didn't sound right. They have to proofread. I'm not, I'm not judging. Thing. God is God. I don't give a hoot nanny what language he's in. <laughs> now he talking about either, either um, he don't believe in God. If he don't believe in God, that's his, that's harder. His harder, his tragedy. Upside down, inside out, left to right, going around in circles. However you want to call it, there is a God. This trash he's feeling. He don't want his child. It ain't even got here yet. He hollering about how he wanted to be. You ain't said y'all was married. Tell him bye. You know what? When you need somebody, God is always there. God don't walk away from us. We walk away from him. With a whole lot of bull crap. He don't come at with us without with, with no bull crap. It's either one way or the other. Now you got somebody that's telling you. That's just like the devil standing up there telling you, well, it's up my way or or the highway. Tell him bye. You don't need that. I don't care what language. Your baby learned that there is a God. He need to know. He need to know there's something greater than him. And God is greater than anything or anyone. 
will ever be or think they are. Everybody wants to be ruler of the world, but nobody wants to do the right thing. Ain't that some shit? Whew. Girl, you got yourself something on your hands. Pray on it. God is there for you. Then again, it could be a test to see how you feel about him. Because God like to know how we feel about him. We all want our, we always want his love, his appreciation. We want him to give us so we'll have the finer comforts of life. But what do we give him? All we ever do is blame him for everything that goes on and what happened. And it ain't no damn body's fault but ours. We blame him for everything. You think about it. And let me know what went down. <laughs> I'm talking that trash. Okay. I really respect you. You are like the town's elder who I would love to come to for advice. So here I am. I am in a long distance relationship with a white guy. He lives on the west coast and I live on the east coast. Mm. I was in a I was in an abusive verbally and physically I'ma just read it. Just like it said. I was in an abusive verbally and physically that ended last year and after two very awkward dating experience, I figured doing the long distance thing would be better for me. I have a disability and I let him know that, but he expect me to fly out to see him first. I live with my parents and in the process of trying to get a job, he has a job yet isn't willing to fly out to see me unless I see him first. During the past few months, during the, during the past months, the Skype dates, phone calls been dwindling down to nothing but texting and slowly that been dwindling down down i'm getting discouraged when it comes to him because he is a great guy but his action don't doesn't match his words actions to say, speak louder than words i talked to my i talked to two of my friends about this and both of them say he isn't about shit and that he isn't about to see me i hate wasting time like that in relationships so my question is should i end things <laughs> Or should I find a guy who lives locally near me? He's 27 and I'm 24. Hmm. Actions speak louder than words. He already tell him. You just don't want to let go. Let go. You'll find somebody else. Stop thinking about being by yourself forever. You ain't going to be by yourself forever. You never said what your disability was. But, uh, <laughs> just remember one thing. You ain't the only one in this world who's got a disability. People have all kinds of disabilities now. And before this war, people stood up straight and tall. Come back, God help them. All kinds of ways and shapes and that poor mind, just like a sack of noodles. They done seen so much and heard so much. They thought they knew something when they went over there. Or well, they know something when they're coming back. And they need all the love and the help that they can get from people in this universe. Because they seen too much. Death is not a beautiful thing, it's an ugly thing. When man is sent out there in the world um, to destroy each other, it's ugly. It comes back ugly. Yes, and I tell you, if uh, he can't um, come to see you, or if write you, or however else, leave him alone. You don't need to aggravate yourself, put yourself through a whole lot of dumb shit. Because it's not necessary. You can stay right there in your own town and put yourself through some dumb shit. So you don't need him to do it for you. So, uh, just tell him, um, 
life has passed you by, or just don't don't text them no more. Just just see the day. Just drop it. Just drop it right yeah, there. Yeah, let it go. Drop it like a hot potato. Man, you know she don't want that up there. This one so everybody will be running in the ring, baby. All right. You just make sure you put it down when you when you um. <laughs> you never had to knock you in your head, Charles. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get through this one. I'm in a dilemma, and it has been wearing hard on me on my mind for the past few days. Mm. My best friend has a boo who doesn't want to commit to her, but she is head over heels and put puts her all into him. Anyway, this past Sunday, a group of us friends went out, including him. The next morning, I checked my Facebook and see a message from him. He left at 3.45 in the morning. In the message, it pretty much just said that he had a good time and was glad he went. I didn't know if he was drunk or what, so I didn't respond. Later that day, he messages me again, this time given his phone number, and asked me to send him the picture that I had in my phone that we took that we all took that night. Instead of sending them to him, I sent them to my friend. Mm. I feel totally uncomfortable and know that it is inappropriate. I, Of course, I would automatically tell my friend off the bat, but she is very, very extremely sensitive to everything unless the smallest thing send her into depression mode. She is already heartbroken that he doesn't want to commit to her and feels nothing ever goes right for her. Should I tell her and risk her going over the edge or just let it go? By the way, I sent him a message back telling him that I don't find it appropriate for him to message me privately. His response was, cool, it be like that. I understand. Well, for one thing, your friend's going to get upset anywho. I don't care how you may call yourself trying to give her that glass of water to drink. She going to choke and spill all over the place anyhow. And she got to find out that life is not going to always go the way she wants to go. He ain't going to be the, the last man she ever loved. You think that person, you can't live without that person. And Oh, God, you wouldn't. That'll be the last thing you got to love, and you can't breathe, you can't eat without him. I, I admit it, we'll try to run you crazy, because love can be pretty nasty when she wants to be. Oh, she could be so many things. But when she get to, I got to, got to, got to, obsession thing, oh, man, you're in trouble. But, um... Uh, He's just not, man, you can't make somebody want you who don't want you. It may not be the fact he don't want you the way you want him. It may not be that he don't want you at all. He's just not ready to commit. Now, if he's been with you five or six years, now come on now. You can just walk away from the thing, but I mean a couple months... You don't expect nobody to just jump right on into the fire pool. They don't know where they're going, what they're doing. They don't know that much about you or anything. And then you'd expect them to just jump in there because you say you love them. Come on with that. Man, chance. And uh, stop falling, call yourself falling so hard in love. And then you can't get out of the pool by yourself. You know, you make it, sometimes we make it so damn hard for ourselves when it don't really have to be. But you always got one that gives uh, 70 and the other one gives 30. It's hard to, to live like that way because sometimes we, ha we have to. One always gives more than the other in different situations. And in this situation, it looks like you're giving the most and he's not. Either you willing to go along with how he feels about it right now or just let go. I mean, there is no other answer to it. Now, you want to do a whole lot of suffering and bleeding and Jesus on the cross thing and everything. Go ahead on and do it because you're just wasting your time right now. But uh, otherwise, 
say thanks and no thanks and go ahead on. You know, I might, might, might introduce you to somebody else or something else that's a little bit different or, or a little bit better than what it was. Let me know what happened, girl. First of all, I love the advice you gave Mama Scorpion. It's truly a blessing. Well, I was pregnant and due April 9th. Last month, March 10th, I went to one of my routine checkups and my baby wasn't moving much. So the doctor decided to induce me. My husband and I went to the hospital, checked in, and a nurse started hooking me up. They put the monitor on my belly but couldn't find a heartbeat. Several, no several nurses tried to locate a heartbeat, but nothing. My doctor came in, did an ultrasound, looked at me, and said my baby was gone. I screamed and cried till I blacked out. The only thing I remember was being told I would have a C-section. I have been so depressed, and I just don't know how to keep going. I can't believe at the age of 25 I had to bury my first child. I'm lost and scared. She says, I'm lost and scared. How can I move on and smile again? Thank you so much. Be blessed. Well, baby, uh, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm sorry about that, that that happens to you. You know, but sometimes that's the way life is. It's a tragedy. It's, a, it's something that really hurts, you know. But um, push this push down on any button and it'll cut it off. You got it's it's that it's that other phone, and then they don't know how to hang up. If nobody not picking up after a couple rings, why the hell you keep ringing the phone? Cause that's the way some people are. Damn, they really want to get through to talk to nobody. And those tragedies and things really do hurt. But nothing is for nothing is for nothing. I'm not saying that. It, 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 when things happen sometimes, it happens for a reason. And it just wasn't meant for that baby to come here at that time. But she'll come back. And you'll have more. And God held it up for his own personal reason. Not maybe necessarily yours, but his. And, um... You thank him for his God and his understanding because it might have not been at the right moment, the right time, the right place. Uh, even though we're not meant to bury our children, sometimes we have to. And that's a very, very, I can speak on a painful thing. And a lot of times it takes us a long time to get over it. But with God's help, prayers and understanding. What's wrong with this? Oh, the boy out here to fix it. Excuse me. Go ahead, just go ahead. Myron, you can keep talking. His uh, understanding and uh, whatever. Oh, okay, no I'm gonna take that out. Yeah, yeah. Seven, eight, three. Yes, sir. Thing, it causes some things um, to happen, and we wonder why. Don't be lost, baby. Don't, don't, don't let it. Don't, don't take it that deep. Don't let it go that deep. Just chalk it up to the next time, and go with it that way. Go with the flow. Go with it that way, and don't say go. Uh, God don't love me no more, and all those kinds of things. No, we ain't going there, because he knows best. But he a lot of times gives us experience in a lot of things that we never had experience in before. And just ask him to be with you, to help you to be strong, strong-minded, strong-willed, and to live life his way. Put your hand in his hand. 
Because like I said, God is there all the time. And said that do we put our hand in his hand and hold on? Or do we blame him for everything that happens to us? You know. And uh, sometimes while we doing all this blaming, it could be something we did, something we ate, something we did, something we did. But uh, God has his reasons. And it'll be another time. Okay. I am at my wits and I'm afraid for my life. I need your help because I don't know who else to ask. In fact, I have no one else to ask. Please, if possible, do not use my name because my mother watches this show in another country. And she doesn't know what's going on. I have been an international student for almost 10 years now. I met this guy I thought was wonderful and loved me for me and cared about me very deeply. We dated for a couple months. Then he asked me to marry him. When I did so, all hell broke loose. We were only married a month in my eyes because he went missing with my money for university and my car. And it turns out this man is a con artist and just married me so he can take my money. He is now sending me threats saying that he's going to report me to immigration for fraud, stating our marriage was fake because I reported him to the police. What should I do now? No one will believe me because I'm an international student and he's an American citizen. I haven't been able to sleep. I cry about this every day because I trust in him. I care for him. Oh, and P.S. Now he says he's gay and I don't understand how someone could be so wicked and hurtful. I don't want to go to jail for something I didn't do. Please help. This don't sound real. Well, like I said, God put it in God's hand. Put your faith in God and do what's right. You don't want nobody to run your life. You don't want nobody to put a gun to you. That's like, like putting a gun to your head and saying, pull your drawers down. You're going to do this dance and this jig the way I tell you to do it. You ain't on TV. That's the same shit you see on TV. And uh, you ain't no bad person. You haven't done anything to anybody. And you're not no jailbird or none of them things. So you ain't got none of that against you. So you just have to put your faith in God and go ahead on. You know, a lot of times people want to um, threaten us. Go ahead and put in for an annulment. Because you're not together. And, uh, or not unless you just want to wait uh, for that year. People uh, who know you, know whether you're married or not, um, can uh, speak up for you, can vouch for you, how you live your life. All these things come into play. Uh, I know you have, have said somebody that some, or some people that can speak up for you. You ain't the only immigrant here in this world. God knows there's so many of them till it ain't even a joke. Don't be scared of it. It should have took you out of that realm when you got married to him. But now he wants to play a game and and throw stuff and give me some money or this and tell him to go fly. Mm, these people be so young getting married like two, three months. That's what be taking me out. All right, I think we got two more. About three years ago, I graduated college, moved from Jamaica to New York, and started a new job. I'm a gay male and wanted to live in a city that was not homophobic, unlike my home country of Jamaica. When I started my job three years ago, I was an administrative assistant at a major software company. Within two months of being there, I entered a secret relation relationship with my manager, who is okay we okay my six month anniversary was with the company he promoted me to an account manager december 2013 i told him i did not want to be in a re secret relationship anymore and he told me he would think about it but he was not ready to let people know about our relationship especially because we work for the same company and that may cause 
some problems. Contra conflicts of interest, he said. In January, he promoted me again to senior account manager, and I was just on top of the world. Granted, I felt like he, was the, he only promoted me to shut me up, but I accepted. The salary is good. So now March come around, my boss hired a new guy to fill the position that became vacant because of my promotion. The new guy is very attractive. About two weeks ago, my boss, who has been my boyfriend all this time, has been giving me a lot of attitude. And this new employee is acting like such a bitch towards me. Yesterday, I saw him and my boss having a conversation together in the conference room. And they look mighty close, just like how we started our relationship. My question to you is, should I be concerned? I really do love him and want to spend the rest of my life with him. We've always been good for each other, but this changed when this when this cunt start working at the company. What do you want? I mean, come on now. It's like you ain't seen the handwriting on the wall. <clears throat> Speak to him about it. Find out which way he want to go. Want you to find something different someplace else. See if you can get a position somewhere else. Uh, maybe in the same company, if that's not just one company. And um, give you a position, um, like I said, somewhere else. Whereas you both don't have to let the whole world know that you're affiliated with each other. Um, it can be a little hard, and especially if you... If you want somebody still to be your own and then you see him with somebody else, that's a hurting feeling. It's very hurting. But uh, obviously it shows that person has uh, outgrown you and um, he don't really want to be bothered with you anymore. So I'm just go ahead and chalk it on up. You, that ain't the only fish in the sea, my God. All them fish, all them fish in the sea and you got to be hooked on one flavor. Look, maybe it's time to move on anyhow. Stop looking at life so doggone serious and be happy with it. Because some people didn't wake up this morning, you know. Some people ain't going to wake up tomorrow morning either. So live life and be happy. Stop sitting around feeling all sad and, oh, whoa, whoa with me. Now, let me tell you some of you people something. Life can be what you make it to be. It could be sad, be happy, upside down, and some people could come along and make you feel like you ain't nothing but a piece of shit. Hmm. You know, well, shit ought to know shit. You know, you run your own life. Wake up. To the sounds and the harmonious things that's going on in life, and live your life to make you happy. We sometimes get out there and try so hard to make other people happy, but who try to make you happy? Who put their arms around you and loved you, even for a hug or a kiss? You know, my granddaughter walked up to me, and. Uh, she said, come here, Grandma. Oh, she, <laughs> she a little, uh, pretty little thing. Put her arms around me. She said, whisper in my ear, you, you, you know I love you. And give me a hug and give me a kiss. Oh, big old, as she been out in the street sweating and running all up and down. You know I love you. She kissed me sometimes and run on about her business. And uh, at first when she started doing it, you know, I kind of jerked back, you know, because I, I wasn't looking for it, you know. And I said, said to myself, what the, the bitch, what you jerking back for? What, you, what the fuck is you jumping back for? This child's trying to give you her, her affection and her love that she feels at that moment. And she coming out the street all dirtied up and everything, you know. And I stopped, I stopped jerking back. I started looking for her to run in and put her arms in it, around me, you know. Sometimes my mama get jealous, so I don't, I don't care, though. But she put her arms around me or she 
She never leaves for school in the morning without coming into my room and uh, telling me how much she loves me. We have a little signal thing that we do to each other to, to, that says we care about each other and I, and I love you. And she give me the signal and I'll give her mine back. And she said, I'll catch you later when you come when I come back here. Yeah. And she gave me a hard way to go. Don't think she don't. She thinks she miss cutie beauty. And she does a little things that ain't supposed to be right. But I get with her. Don't believe I don't. I get with her. And then I got no I got one that it called Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson, boy, I tell you. That's me all the way. That's that's my great granddaughter. She just like me. I I used to be one of them little kids. I was I was wild out in the street cause I was taking care of myself. And back in them days, you ain't had no babysitter. You was your own babysitter, and you bet not get into no shit, or your ass was shit. And I tell you, if you got some of them strap whippings, stick whippings. And all other kinds of weapons. You did what you was told to do. And didn't question it. Or well, these little monkeys now. They just. Feel do I do what I want to do. I ain't got to answer you. you. You ain't my mama. You ain't my daddy. Well I'm going to prove I ain't your mama. I ain't your daddy. But you know it, it gets hard sometimes. When you out there by yourself. And you want to live your life. And you know, picked up on this extra soul that's got you got to drag it along with you. But uh, I tell you, just hang in there. It'll be all right. Because they don't stay little always. And they grow up. And you look, they nine now, and then they twelve. And then you turn around and fifteen or sixteen. But don't stop. Teaching them and telling them about life. Don't stop getting and getting after them. Don't stop teaching them the difference between right and wrong. Whether they believe in what you say, whether they like what you say or not, don't stop. Just keep doing what you're supposed to do because there's no book for a man and woman to be mama and daddy. There's no book. They've written a many a book, but who knows? Who knows whether they're right and whether they're wrong. But we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Alright, mom, wrap it up. Yeah. Is that it? Ain't nobody else? There's more, but I'm going to save them for next week. Alright. And I'm going to tell you all, love each other. Like I said, the Easter season is upon us. Give God the honor and the glory. Not man, God. Because without him, we are nothing, nothing, nothing. Believe me, he is everything. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have this little raggedy piece of house that I got here. And I tell you, to wake, to wake up in the morning, I got the aches, achy knees and everything. But to wake up in the morning, it may not be much to nobody else, but it's a lot to me to be able to lay there if I want to lay there. I've gotten up a many a morning and poured out in the street ever since I was a little girl. And to be able to, to lay there if I want to and don't have to get up is a whole lot. Others feel, well, why ain't you out there? I, I don't have to. I got to run out there. Why ain't you still running out there? Because God gave me that right that I should have a little teeny bit of rest. Sometimes I look at it as, shoot, if I didn't have this ache or pain in this leg or this knee, I could, the things I could go get me a second job, or the things I could go out there and do. I know he slowed me down for some reason, but he ain't got to tell me. He just slowed me down. I could still do a lot of things. But uh, that pain has stopped me from doing it. I ain't trying to take no pain pill be a, a pain jam. <laughs> you know, you always got to be popping pills. I've never been a pill person anyhow, but 
I tell you, love life. Worship your God. I don't care what you call him. Worship him. Because without him, you're nothing. And we are all so miserable. And it just, let's just, just, just sit down and take a minute and look at people. Listen to people, what they say. And it's, it's really so sad. We're really so sad. But we don't have to be that sad. When God gives us this life to live. He gave us this life to be happy. He gave us this life to live, to learn. Learn. Something got to happen to you 15 times before you catch on. Come on with that crap. You know what I mean? You don't take that long to learn. I don't take a baby long to learn the long, long to learn something. So it shouldn't take you that long either. And learn how to sometimes be satisfied with a little bit. You ain't got to have a whole damn pie. What you need with a whole pie anyway? A slice is better than none. At least you did get a taste of it. Life can be awful bitter. And then sometimes she can be so sweet and delicious. Have a nice holiday.